Hey everybody, welcome back once again. And in this movie, what we're going to do is talk about some more differences, uh, mainly in tag structure uh, between HTML5 and the previous versions. And the biggest one uh, that provides, I think, most interest to me is the A tag. And the A tag is, you know, it's got to be one of the most important tags in HTML. It's what really brings the entire internet and makes it work. It gives you the ability to link between pages. Okay, so without that, you're stuck on one page. So if you think of like all the technologies that are the big thing now, like Twitter, Facebook, social media, all these things. I mean, none of it would be possible without that A tag. So uh, this is arguably, I think, the most important tag um, that HTML deals with. Now, in previous versions, here's the XHTML example. Let's say you had three elements. You had an image, you had an H1 header tag, and you had a paragraph. And they all link to the same thing. Okay, so this is the follow me on Twitter thing, and here's the link. Now, Here's the interesting thing is it required three separate A tags, even though you wanted to put that entire block into the same link. And this was a pain. And the reason it was is because the A tag is a line level in an inline element. OK, so you could put it in the middle of a paragraph. It would not provide carriage returns, things like that. It would flow with the text. And so it made sense that you could not uh, wrap block level elements inside inline elements. So that's why you had to do all those. Well, the A tag did get an overhaul in HTML5, and now you can wrap multiple elements inside an A tag. Okay, so you can see here it is. Here's our image, here's our H1, and here's our paragraph. They will all link within this wrapped A tag to this address. Now, here's the one rule on this is that you cannot put an A tag inside of an A tag. Okay, but that's really it. You wouldn't want to have a link inside of a link. That, for obvious reasons, would be difficult to interpret where you're trying to go once you clicked on it. So that is not allowed. But uh, they've, they've taken that off and, and you've been able to put multiple elements inside an A tag, so that's pretty important. Um, a couple other changes. Uh, we'll talk about some tags. Some tags have been depreciated or become obsolete and some of them have changed. In previous versions of HTML, uh, you know, once something's obsolete, if you use it, it doesn't validate correctly. And so now uh, they're treated a little different. It's just like if your browser supports that tag, then go for it. Uh, the blink tag is a great example of that. That was an annoying tag everybody used to use back in the mid-90s. Um, and it, browser stopped supporting it, it's now obsolete. Well, if you put it in the document, you would get an error. But now in HTML5, you know, you're on your own on these tags. Uh, my feeling is, is if you know it's obsolete and you need to keep up with these, then don't use them. Um, or if they're depreciated, meaning they're on their way out and something like that, I would definitely stay away from uh, some tags that are completely gone are all the frame tags, the frame set, frame, and no frames, and uh, that's fine with me. They were never really all that cool to begin with, so um, you don't need frames anymore with the layouts we're doing now with what you can do uh, with JavaScript and CSS3, so they're gone. Um, the acronym tag has now been replaced with the abbreviation tag, so if I have an abbreviation for a company or something, or NTSC, which is a video uh, term, uh, use the abbreviation tag, and this will tell the search engines that it's not oh, made Word. It is an abbreviation or an acronym. So the ABBR tag, uh, which is important. Another thing mentioning is the strong and emphasis tags. Okay, now you could, it used to be that you had your choice. You could use bold, the bold tag, the B tag, sorry. You could use the lowercase b, or you could use a lowercase i for italics. Well, these still exist, but they mean different things in HTML5. For instance, the i tag now means, you know, like an aside and a conversation. So you might use that in a script or something like that. Now you're probably thinking, well, this is very nitpicky. Why? And the reason is, is because, uh, you know, HTML5, if you look at like the technology that's come on in the last couple of years with mobile devices and and even now televisions that are internet compatible, um, they're thinking outside of the web browser on this. And so you might have text recognition or something like that that requires different meanings in those different tags. And so this is what they've settled on. So I would just start from, from now forward using the strong tag if you need this text to be in bold and use the emphasis tag or the EM tag if you need uh, something in italics. They'll just work like that. Uh, one other tag I want to talk about is the cite tag. It's a citation tag. And this is typically used for, uh, this is a weird one. This is used for uh, citing a source on something, so like a book title or a movie title, so I put Gone with the Wind in here. Now, typically, uh, the spec, this is what's weird, is the spec says you can't put people's names in here, and that seems really weird and backwards, but you know, why would that be the spec? Well, because uh, this, browsers will render site tags in italics, and typically people's names are not in italics, are not displayed in italics, so that's why it's defined that way. However, if you're citing a source and you need a name in there, there's no way a validator is going to be able to tell whether it's a name or a book or whatever, so you know, knock yourself out. That's just a just a little thing to watch out for in there. Um, beyond this, uh, you can see that, that there's a lot of simplicity in this HTML5 document. Now, this is not a complex document, but the framework is very simple. Um, another thing about HTML5 that's cool is 
that a lot of the, like how you write things is entirely up to you. You remember in XHTML, I remember it was very strict. Everything had, all the tags must be in lowercase. You had to close them. They could be self-closing or not. So for instance, like a break tag, if you did this, that was not legal in HTML for XHTML. Okay, you had to have that self-closing tag. Well, now it's up to you. You can write your break tag like this if you want. The browser will understand. You can self-close it if you want. That's fine too. You can put it in caps. This will work. That used to be a big no-no. Um, and you can also do that. Um, now, personally, I like to follow standards I already have set up for myself for consistency reasons. So for that reason, I still prefer to do everything in lowercase and still self-close my tags. Now, I know that's a hangover from XHTML, but for me, it makes it most readable when I'm trying to edit my HTML, and it remains a level of consistency for myself. So I would do something, whatever you're going to do, stick with it. So if you love capitals on tags, then make everything caps, but um, I personally don't. Um, so anyway, just something to think about there. Uh, but anyway, all this stuff is usable now in H HTML5. The spec is not finished yet. Uh, it requires more revisions, more additions, things like that, and people have got to sign off on it. And, you know, they're saying probably around 2012 is when we'll see it finished. But it's okay to start using right now because most of these browsers are on board with supporting it. Uh, the weakest is probably Internet Explorer, and they're, they're saying they're going to fix that in version 9 even, so uh, we'll see it when it comes out. But the whole idea here is that we have a spec that it gives enough versatility to start allowing a web page to start behaving like an application and that's really the ultimate goal that we want we want a web page to be more or provide more usefulness than just a presentation of material to be read okay so that is very important um you know there's nothing wrong with that but you want the capability to go beyond that and start behaving like an application so anyway there are a lot of apis and things like that in html5 um that i'm not going to go into in the series of these documents because you, you we're going to use javascript to get around some of them right now and quite frankly um they're not quite finished and I, I think it's a little premature to start using some of those now but anyway this is more or less where we are with everything and you can start coding from here so that's it for now and i will see you guys in the next film